Hello everyone, let's go ahead and take now a look at the relationship between improper integrals and series. Now again, keep in mind that all we're doing is we're trying to determine whether these converge or diverge. Okay, now let's go ahead and say that we have a certain given situation uh, described here by the graphs. We're going to say that f of x is greater than zero, which means that it's always going to be positive. And we also know that f prime of x is always going to be less than zero, which means that it's monotonic decreasing. So what we have here is we have three different things. We have the exact area, which is of course going to be described by the area that is contained by the x-axis and below the blue curve there, same here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call this the upper sum approximation and the lower sum approximation. Now, when we went ahead and took a look at how we generated the area function using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we basically tried to make sure that these partitions got closer and closer and closer to zero, so that we know then that we're actually dealing with summing up all of these lines or rectangles of with zero, close to zeros and well, zero, to come up with the exact area. But we're not going to do that. We're going to just go ahead and say that delta x is always going to be equal to 1. So in other words, we're always going to make sure that the rectangles have a base width of 1. So notice that the base width for all of those rectangles there are 1. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the upper sum approximation, again, remember all we're doing in terms of approximating the area is we're just adding up rectangles. So notice that all of these rectangles have that delta x value of 1. And what we have then is that f of x i, so this is from the summation from i is equal to 1 to infinity. So what I'm doing then is I'm taking x sub 1, because that's the first value for i, and I'm taking this functional value, multiplying it by that, to create this rectangle here. And then if I add the next one, it's going to be this rectangle here, this rectangle here, this rectangle here. And the most important thing to notice is that, of course, the area is more than the area that is actually contained under the curve. And that's the reason why we call it the upper sum approximation. The lower sum approximation, on the other hand, is actually going to be f of x sub i plus 1. And the reason for that is because we start off with x sub 2 as our first functional value, which gives that height of the rectangle, times it by the width. So in other words, we're coming up with this rectangle, plus this rectangle, plus that rectangle, plus that rectangle. And again, notice that what we have, we have rectangles that are all contained below the actual function, and therefore that's why we call this the lower sum approximation. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the relationship between these, of course the upper sum approximation for this particular situation is always going to be greater than or equal to the exact area, which is also going to be greater than or equal to the lower sum approximation. Now, this is going to be a key fact for us to go ahead and realize, is that the upper sum approximation minus the lower sum approximation is always going to be equal to c. Okay, now what the heck is c? Well, c is going to be a real number. Now, if we go ahead and add up all of these rectangles and add up all of those rectangles, I'm hoping that you see what c is. C is actually just this first rectangle here. It's that first rectangle, which of course is going to be a particular number, which is represented by the area of that rectangle there. So, it's always going to be a constant. It's always going to be a constant. Now, given that, given an infinite series, which is of course what this is and what that is right there, we can use the improper integral to determine the convergence or divergence of the series. So, there's the connection. If we go ahead and take a look at either the upper sum or the lower sum approximations, being that we're actually approximating the exact area between those two, we can actually go ahead and say then that if I have, say for example, this here which is an infinite series, instead of trying to determine whether the infinite series converges or diverges, I can use my integral, my improper integral. So notice that we have 3 here, the infinity there. Notice that instead of the i's, I got x's. And notice that I have my d of x. And I can use this integral here, this improper integral here, determine whether this diverges or converges. And based upon whether it converges or diverges, I know whether this converges or diverges. 
So let's take a look at this. It says that if I go ahead and look at this infinite series here, I can go ahead and determine whether it converges or diverges by looking at the improper integral. If I look at the improper integral, of course, I can split that up into two improper integrals. I got the integral from 3 to infinity of 1 over x d of x plus the integral of 3 to infinity of 1 over x squared d of x. And we know now, being that this is p equal 1, that this is going to diverge. We know that this one over here, being that p is equal to 2, that's going to converge. Well, if you have something that's diverging and converging, then of course, overall, the improper integral is going to diverge. Now, being that the improper integral is going to be diverging, that means that the infinite series is also going to diverge. Okay, so that's the relationship that we have. We knew that we had improper integral and we have techniques now to go ahead and determine whether improper integrals converge or diverge. The relationship between the improper integrals and in the series are based upon the upper sums and the lower sums. And we can use either one of those two to go ahead and say that if I have an infinite series, I can then go ahead and change it to an improper integral. I can use those in improper integral techniques to determine whether or not the improper integral diverges or converges. And therefore, the infinite series is going to do the same. Okay, so we'll take a look at some of these problems and we'll see how we do. Uh, good luck. Take a look at that section and think of any questions that you might have and bring them up in class. See you next time. Bye-bye.